Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedics, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at Corto Maltese, The Ballad of the Salt Sea by Italian comics grandmaster Hugo Pratt. This was the first appearance of Corto Maltese. Uh, it originally appeared serialized in an Italian magazine in 1967. Hugo Pratt had already been drawing for uh, decades, was already a pretty big name in the Italian comic scene. But when he put out this story, uh, Corto Maltese isn't even the main character, technically. It's uh, this woman, Pandora. But he was so charming, so likable, such an interesting character that, you know, he became the Fonzie, if you will. And within a few years, uh, Corto Maltese was a sensation in Europe. And even to this day, he's one of the most beloved characters in European comics. Um, this is uh, published by Universe, an Italian publisher. This edition came out in 2012. Um, there's now nice, big size, uh, black and white versions of these published by IDW. I think they've done all of them, maybe. But this is a pretty nice version. It's translated by Hall Powell. Colors by Patrizia Zanotti. Now, um... I don't know if these were originally in black and white. I think they were, I, I'd assume. But um, the colors are pretty nice. But just by Hugo Pratt's, the style of his art, I think I prefer it in black and white. Because, you know, he's from that Milt Caniff school. Very Alex Toth. Um, it seems like it would be really nice to see in black and white. But I've never seen it, so this is all I got. So it's 1913, we're in the South Seas. We see this outrigger, and the first mate, Cranio, spies this little boat, and there's two shipwreck survivors on it. One of the guys goes to tell the captain, and we meet Rasputin. And we already can tell Rasputin's kind of a, he's got a few uh, nuts unscrewed in his brain. He's, he's kind of a nut. And uh, we see the... Uh, the two castaways. And this is Pandora and Cain Groove Snore. They're the scions of a very wealthy family that kind of control the business interests in the South Sea area in Oceania. So they decide to keep them as hostages and get a ransom for them. So uh, Pandora is the first one to wake up. And she's very worried about Cain. He's in a different cabin, I guess. Rasputin enters her room and get, tries to get fresh with her. And she socks him. And then breaks this bottle and is threatening him. He smacks her. So we realize that Rasputin isn't just a little nutty. He's pretty fucking mean. He's, he's a shitty dude. Then all of a sudden they see another thing on the ocean. It's this raft, and this guy is hogtied to it. And we quickly find out that's Cort it's Corto Maltese, the very first appearance. Um, Rasputin is kind of, obviously knows him. They know each other. But he's all like saying, I should just let you sink out there. Maybe I'll let you sweat under the sun a little longer. And he says, just, just bring me up to the boat, you bastard. So he does. Turns out these guys both work for a very mysterious figure named the Monk. And the monk is almost like this pirate king who uh, kind of rules the criminal activity in the South Seas. He's based on this little island called Escondida. And from there, he has all these lieutenants and operatives who, uh, you know, do his crimes for him. So we, we find out that they... Uh, they're, they're basically, the monk has allied with the Germans. This is right before World War I has broken out, but all the, uh, you know, the allies and the Germans are already lined up against each other. War is about to start, so they're already getting ready, kind of. So they see a Dutch ship, and um, they fly an English flag, and Rasputin puts on an English captain's uniform. 
And when they get close, he asks for permission to board. The Dutch and the English were allies, so they agree. As soon as he gets on board, Rasputin shoots the captain and then proceeds to order his men to shoot the whole crew. And Corto is totally against it. He's like, what are you doing? So I just put them on a boat. We don't have to murder them. But Rasputin does. He's obviously just a, he's like a psycho. Corto grabs a gun and puts it on Rasputin. And he says, I'm not going to let you get away with this. But one of his soldiers conks him on, his head, on the head. Meanwhile, the Cain, the other cousin, finally wakes up. And he finds Pandora. And she fills him in on what's going on. So as punishment for going against him, Rasputin uh, puts Corto down in the steam room, shoveling coal. But um, they're about to meet the Germans. So he realizes uh, it would look better if there's like two white lieutenants, you know, European descent uh, captains or whatever. So he says, okay, get out of there. Rasputin would have probably left him down there for months if he uh, could have. It's so weird how he dressed Pandora. Sometimes she has such a pinhead. Look at that pointy head there. I couldn't help while I was reading this graphic novel the whole time I was thinking her name was Pandora. I kept calling her that. Look at that right there. That's a very weird shaped head. We realized through their discussions that uh, Rasputin and Corto have such a strange friendship. Like, they're at each other's throats. A lot of times, whenever given the chance, Rasputin will totally stab him in the back. But, uh, and yet, it's like Corto is his only friend in the world. <laughs> and deep down he knows it, even though he will sometimes attempt to murder Corto. And Corto is such an affable, likable guy. He always forgives him and actually will try to save Rasputin's skin, even though he knows that if he turns his back for a second, Rasputin might try to off him. So it's just a very strange friendship, if you want to call it that, because they're, they're true frenemies. They're just as much enemies as they are friends. So they make the deal with the Germans I'm sorry, Rasputin does. Because Corto was sent off with the two kids. They didn't want the Germans to find out that they had these two hostages. He kind of went upriver in this little catamaran, far from the German headquarters. Corto has a kind of heart-to-heart -heart with uh, Pandora. Kind of a little charged with a little tension. She's naked under the sheet, and she's like, oh, no, don't go. Let's talk or whatever. And sometimes, though, I don't know what the hell Hugo Pratt's doing. <laughs> That's, she looks terrible there. Looks like some chimpanzee girl. I did want to point out, too, though, here's an example of Hugo Pratt's crazy ink work. It kind of reminds me of, like, Jack Kirby. You know, Jack Kirby will, like, do a little squiggle instead of drawing a trapezoid, but it totally works. You don't question it. When you actually stare at it, you're like, what the hell? That's never existed in nature, this squiggle. Or some on someone's, you know, arm or leg. But he does these little, like, swaths of black. I guess this is, uh, you know, the wrinkles in his shirt. It's just very odd. I, I don't know why I like it. Because technically, it doesn't even work quickly. Like, even when I'm glossing over it, I'm like, what the hell? Does he have stripes on his shirt all of a sudden? But, um, it's, yeah, very interesting. He has a very unique style, Hugo Brat.
So I forgot to mention Cranio is on the catamaran with them. The first mate. And they get caught in a horrible storm. And the catamaran, sorry, catamaran capsizes. Here's some more crazy inking. Looks like he's, he's got leopard spots all of a sudden. So everyone gets separated in the shipwreck. And the first one we see is Kane. He's washed up on the beach of this little island. And look how simple these seagulls are drawn. They're so good. It's just a few lines. So Kane is uh, shouting for Pandora. He's very worried about her. Kind of assumes she's dead. And then he sees this youngster. He thinks is a cannibal. The cannibal collapse. I'm sorry, he's not a cannibal, but this uh, guy collapses. Kane drags him to this cave, and when he wakes up, turns out he's uh, fluent in English. His name's Taro. He's a Maori from New Zealand. They look outside the cave and they see these uh, natives. I love the way these guys are drawn. They follow the tracks to the cave. And uh, they capture them and march them off. From the foliage, we see Corto watching this scene. And he says, I'm glad to see the boy's been saved, which is kind of odd because he doesn't know who these guys are. Turns out they're not so nice. So he's going to try to find Pandora. There's another odd panel right there. Very strange. And pretty quickly, he finds Pandora in another cave. She's not a fan of his. As far as she knows, King's dead. So I guess he's got a cruel streak because he let her think. He didn't say, oh, I saw King, he's fine. He waits a little while. And then when he admits it, that King's alive after all that time, she pulls his gun and she's like, you monster, you didn't tell me. You wanted me to think Cain was dead. And she shoots him. I mean, he's her captor after all. <laughs> he works for the mug. The, the natives hear the gunshot. And they run to the cave and capture Pandora as well. And Corto. Turns out Corto's not dead. He's just wounded. We're in this little, like, prison shack, I guess. And we see uh, Taro and Kane. And they hear a commotion. And they look out. Kane looks outside. He sees Pandora being marched into the village. I love these masks, by the way. They throw Pandora into the cell, into the little prison hut. And they're both very happy that each is alive, each other is alive. She tells Cain how she shot him. Man, I love these masks. One of the masked guys comes into the prison hut and he starts talking to Pandora. He knows her name. She's like, who are you? And he basically tells her that, you know, you kind of fucked up. Cordo, if it wasn't for Corto Maltese, you'd be dead by now. He was the one who like convinced Rasputin not to kill one. He was going to kill one of them and get the ransom for the other. And he also, like, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have survived the shipwreck. Turns out, uh, the guy takes off his mask. It turns out it's Cranio. 
he killed one of the guys and took his mask. So he promises to get him out of there. And uh, they escape. With Cordo Maltese's body, who's still injured. Some fun action stuff. They uh, steal a boat. And the natives uh, chase after them in their longboat. But they got a gun. And they, they shoot them all. And end their pursuit. God, look at those squiggles for the shirt wrinkles. It's crazy. Corto wakes up. And he's not too happy with Pandora. As you can imagine. All of a sudden... A uh, submarine surfaces, and it's Rasputin, and uh, the German ally of them, Sluter, Captain Sluter. They all come on board, and uh, Corto Maltese meets this Lieutenant Sluter. And we see Sluter's kind of an honorable guy. He's like, I'm going to make sure Rasputin uh, leaves that girl alone, you know, leaves Pandora alone. Sluter introduces himself to the two kids. And uh, Rasputin's right outside the door and he can hear everything. And uh, basically Kane is telling everything to Lieutenant Sluter. So Rasputin's got a gun in his hand. He says, damn little snot. He's telling him everything. I could just kill them all and take over the submarine. So this guy is such a little snake, you know. Corto shows up, though, and says, hey, Rasputin, what are you doing over there with that gun in your hand? Kind of puts the kibosh on it. And Rasputin's just all like, oh, nothing. I'm not doing anything. He knows what he was going to do, and he basically talks him out of it. He says, listen, trust the monk. You know, just follow the plan. You don't want to get the monk pissed at you. More of this crazy stuff. It's like Japanese calligraphy or something. So, uh... Corto Maltese and Pandora have a little discussion. Um, they kind of make up. He's such an affable guy. He's just like, ah, you try to kill me. Whatever. I'm going to look after you. Make sure you're, you're okay. Sluter and uh, Rasputin get in a fight. Because... Uh, Rasputin was kind of implying that, like, oh, you got a crush on that Pandora. The reason why I got so angry is because uh, he kind of, you can already tell he kind of does. So uh, they make it to Escondida, which is, uh, you know, the monk's stronghold. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of Tic Tacs, this inking here craziness and Sluter also assures that Pandora that you know he's looking out, out for her and Kane and he's not going to let anything happen to him So we meet another one of uh, Monk's uh, lieutenants, Sprindolin, and he's this really good-natured guy. And he's kind of looking after the kids. He's in charge of taking care of them. 
So, uh, Corto Maltese and Pandora get in a little car. They're driving around the island, and some figure here up on the hill shoots shoots at them, kills the driver. The car goes careening off this cliff. Corto Maltese expertly like twists his body and twirls so he can totally land into the water because he's pretty far up. <laughs> Look at this crazy shading here as he's underwater. That is just really weird looking. He looks like a tiger. I'm sorry, a zebra. Look at that. So he rescues uh, Pandora from the car wreck. As soon as they get to the shore, this octopus attacks Cordo Maltese, pulls him into the water. cordo has got a knife and he takes it out. But then he can't, he doesn't surface. So two of these natives dive down and they see that cordo has got his foot cut, caught in a giant clam. <laughs> so uh, he frees Corto from the clam. They swim to the surface. And then all of a sudden a shark pops out. This is crazy. This is like aqua violence. Just, they're getting attacked by every creature in the sea. Pretty soon a minnow is gonna jump out and bite him on the ear or something. So uh, one of the guys, the natives, uh, spears the shark before it can get to Corto. It's a pretty fun sequence. I thought this panel here of him running through the foliage. Look at that, just like scratchy, slashing, inking. But it looks great. But when you look at it closely, it just looks like he took some magic markers and scribbled over everything. Really neat stuff. So the first person uh, Corto suspects, of course, is Rasputin. He breaks into his hut. And I love this. You don't even see the fight. You just see outside the hut. And they're fighting so strenuously that the hut collapses into just nothing. Finally, Rasputin convinces him. He says, like, I couldn't have done it. He's got a good alibi, basically. And Corto, you know, comes to his senses is like, yeah, I guess you couldn't have done it. But then he kind of, like, I can't remember why, but kind of thinks that maybe it's Kane. And it looks like it could have been him. I like Sprindolin dressed up in a nun's habit to make Pandora feel more comfortable. <laughs> like she's in a good hospital. She tells Corto, she says, promise you won't do anything to hurt Cain. Almost as if she knows that he might be responsible. This is never really resolved. Unless I'm really dense and I miss something. But kind of confusing a little bit of a story plot there. So now we finally meet the monk, the mysterious monk. This guy, he's like Cobalt 60's cousin. It's kind of cartoony almost, you know? You never see his face the whole time. So uh, Rasputin brings him up to speed on what's been going on. And we can tell by the way they're talking, like he's in total control. Like the these guys are just, they're pretty terrified of the monk actually. They, like, you know, they they defer to him a lot because he's just like, he's their leader, absolute leader. Sluter and uh, Corto are definitely like, seem to be bonding. They both realize each one, each other is like a, a good guy, a good egg. Cranio comes in and talks to uh, Corto about how you know, basically at heart, he's a freedom fighter. He's been, you know, working for these pirates and working for the monk, but he wants to uh, unite all the Oceania islands into a nation. Another very odd panel. This looks like 
It was like reproduced 20 times. I got a bad photocopier. <laughs> Very strange looking. So our speeding uh, goes to talk to Keen and he says, oh, when I left my hut this morning after cleaning my gun, when I returned an hour later, the gun had powder traces as if it had just been fired. And he starts brutalizing Keen. He's like, it was you. The monk walks in and he says, Rasputin, enough. And he asks Cain his name. And he says, I'm Cain Groovesnore, sir, of the Groovesnores in Sydney. And the monk is totally silent for two panels. And then he says, Rasputin, you're totally responsible for this kid. Anything happens to him, something bad's going to happen to you. So he basically presses uh, Cain for his whole story, his, his lineage. It's like, tell me about your parents and your uncle. And then at the end, the monk says, wasn't there another relative of yours, Thomas Groove Snore? <clears throat> and Cain informs him that he had an uncle, Thomas, and, uh, Supposedly, Uncle Thomas died years ago in a fire that broke out during Uncle Taddeo's wedding with Aunt Margretha. That's, um, Aunt Margretha is the mother of Pandora. He says, that's all I know about him. Nobody talks about him. And there's another silent panel. And your Aunt Margretha? Aunt Margretha died when Pandora was born. And ever since the our, her husband has been taking care of Pandora. And Keen's like, why are you so interested in my family? He starts giggling to himself crazily. He goes in to see Pandora while she's asleep. You know, she's still recuperating. And all of a sudden, he really goes nuts. He starts just yelling, no, no, no. And everyone in the settlement can hear him. Corte Maltese goes up to him to see what's going on. And the monk is acting very out of character. So he's definitely, something's uh, rattled him. He says, don't leave me alone, my friends. Don't leave me alone. Servant's like, shit, what the hell's going on? I've never seen him like that. So I guess the, the monk has to go out on some mission and he wants to leave Rasputin behind. And once again, they get in some little argument. <laughs> And Corto Maltese has to knock him out because their sputins are always plotting some scheme. He uh, confronts the monk, Corto does, and he says, I'm, this seems like a bad idea leaving Rasputin in charge. He's going to take all your treasure and just hightail it out of here. He's a snake, that guy. You can't trust him. And... He basically also tells Corto, he's like, well, I don't want to leave you here to keep an eye on him because, you know, you might want to play Romeo with Pandora while I'm away. And Corto just laughs and the monk says, don't laugh. And then he freaks out and attacks Corto and starts strangling him. And then he throws him off this cliff to his death. And then to show how insane the monk is, Instantly, he's regretful, and he says, I've killed the only friend I had. What a miserable destiny I have. So he tells Cranio that he's going to stay behind the island and keep an eye on Rasputin, because, you know, he knows Rasputin's untrustworthy. And he leaves on the submarine with Lieutenant Sluter. Now we cut away to a, a destroyer in the Australian Navy, and we meet Ronaldo. Groove Snore, another one of the, uh, one of the uncles of the two kids. 
And he's telling his uh, first mate a story about how years ago he was shipwrecked on Escondida. He was washed up on this on the little on the, this little island, and the he met the monk. He treated him very well. He even said something like, "He, uh, sorry, Captain Groosnor says that he treated me as if we belonged to the same club." So they're out searching for the kids. There's another kind of crazy shading. Just a bunch of slashy marks on these guys sitting under a tree in the shade. So now uh, we're back on the Escondida. Cranio has a little uh, chat with Pandora. Kind of gives her a little history of the monk, at least what he knows. And the reason why everyone thinks the monk is so old, centuries old, is because there it's actually two guys. It was two guys. There was an original monk. And he was a priest who was excommunicated for selling slaves. After he died of leprosy, this new monk, you know, took his robes and became the monk. So that's why it seems like he's just been around forever. But uh, Cranio still doesn't know his identity at all. Nobody knows who the monk is. So the Japanese show up, uh, a Imperial destroyer. The Japanese, by the way, are allies with the Dutch and the English and, you know, before World War I and during. Meanwhile, Kane tries to escape and the, the monk soldiers stop him. Rasputin shows up and socks him on the head. So this uh, Japanese contingent enters the village and talks to Cranio. Pandora is in this little hut being guarded, and she calls out. She's like, "Help me!" And then Cranio informs them, he says, I'm sorry, if it hadn't been for that girl, you and your men would have been allowed to leave this island, not anymore. It's like, what are you talking about? You can't fight a, a warship. And he blow, Cranio blows a whistle and they've got cannons. And they destroy the Japanese ship. They machine gun the Japanese soldiers. And uh, Rasputin comes out to congratulate Cranio for a job well done. But then they start arguing because uh, Rasputin wants to uh, punish Pandora for what she did. And of course, Cranio is arguing with them. And Rasputin just pulls out a gun and shoots him dead. Man, I just noticed this. His, his nose, look at that crazy nose. Totally reminds me of a Nemesis the Warlock. <laughs> How crazy that nose is. Bizarre. Rasputin walks up to the throne of the monk and it looks like the monk's sitting in it and he shoots it a bunch of times. He says, monk, where did you come from? And he's like, say something, do something. And it turns out it's a dummy. Rasputin is a mad dog. So Tara says, okay guys, I'm gonna help you escape. This Rasputin's out of control. 
I'm going to get us a boat. We'll take off. While they're getting ready to escape, uh, Tara reveals that um, Corto Maltese is alive. Cranio, before he got shot, he found him at the base of that cliff where the monk threw him off of and has been nursing him back to health. So Cain decides to stay. Cain says, Quarter, I'm going to stay. Corto Maltese might need me. You guys take off. Pretty soon enough, Cade runs into Corto. Corto looks totally fit. I mean, he's so hard to kill this guy. He looks completely healthy. Corto's pretty uh, touched that Cade stayed behind for him. He's definitely uh, kind of admires what he did. Meanwhile, out at sea, Taro is uh, kind of telling um, Pandora about his culture, his gods, uh, the history of his people, the myths and stuff. He says that the Maori, uh, part of their navigation is that they're they kind of have this kinship with sharks, and sharks actually guide them through the ocean. We even see him, he even calls out to a shark. Shark friend, lead me this way. And it does. Pandora's pretty amazed. Meanwhile, back at the sub, uh, we see Captain Sluter and... Uh, the monk informs him is that he says the Escondida has not been replying to my radio messages for days now. We got to turn the ship, the sub around and go back. Something's going on. Meanwhile, back in the little ship, uh, sailing craft, uh, Pandora is ill. So, Taro calls out to a shark and says, "Lead me to an." An island, quick. So they make it to this little island. And there's like an Australian governor there. And when he sees Pandora, he instantly goes to his superiors. And, because this is big news. And when the, the head honcho there questions Pandora, she fills him in on everything that happened. So the monk arrives at Escondida and asks Rasputin, where's Cranio? And he lies and says, I was forced to kill him. He wanted to surrender to the Japanese. And he knows he's lying. He knows Rasputin's a, a just lunatic, you know? And he finds out that the Groove Snort kids have escaped. So he gets, uh, he's like, come with me to Rasputin. And as soon as they're alone, he just beats the crap out of him. Even gets a cat, cat of nine tails and starts whipping him. And basically tells him, he's like, you are so lucky I need you for my ne the next step of my plans. You'd be so dead right now. And then as he's walking away from the hut angrily, Corto Maltese comes out of the shadows. And uh, he's like, yes, it's me in the flesh. As you can see, I've got thick skin, monk. So he basically tells the monk what's uh, happened, the, the repercussions of it. He says, Tara is going to lead the Australian Navy right here. He knows how to get here. So we've got to, we'll need to abandon Escondida. And kind of this dialogue just shows what a weird relationship they have. He says, yeah, you gotta, you gotta leave. And the monk says, the monk dies. He doesn't flee. Corto says, all right, then die. The monk flees. He doesn't die. And Corto says, 
Oh, right, here's a solution then. Die a half and surrender a half. And this cracks up Monk, he laughs. And then Monk says, you know, I'm really glad I didn't kill you and you're alive and well. And Gordo just says, welcome back, Monk. So it's just so strange. It's like this life of piracy, these pirates. They're just like, hey, you're trying to kill me, but no, you know, no hard feelings. We can still be chums. Very weird. So the monk lets uh, Cain free, even though Pandora escaped. He's just like, whatever. Sluter comes up to Cain, and I guess World War I has started now. And the Germans have suffered a lot of defeats in the Malaysian island. I'm sorry, the Malvinas at the hands of the British. So he's basically just like, yeah, I guess my side's lost. It looks like he hasn't been shaving. You know, he's unkept, probably been drinking. So it's like he's basically done with the war. He's like, I'm going to sit out the war in a nice sunny island here. Then he runs into Corto. They have a drink together and a smoke. And, uh, yeah, these guys are definitely, uh, they got a bond, you know. They both uh, realize that they're honorable men. So now we're back with the Australian Navy and Ronaldo Grusbor, the captain. And Taro is now in the Australian Navy. He's got a little uniform and everything. He's um, guiding them back to Escondida. And Pandora's there too as well. So meanwhile, back in Escondida, the monk talks to Cain. And he tells them that he's he wants Cain to come with him over the... They land. And he says, oh, is a hostage? And he says, no, it's because I love you. There are many things you still don't know. You're very important to me, Pandora too. And he says, is that why you flew into a rage when you first saw Pandora? And the monk says, it took me back many years to my youth. It was as if I'd come face to face with someone from my past, someone who had represented all my ambitions in life. And he admits that it's, he says, it's your Aunt Magritha, Pandora's mother. I was very much in love with her. But then he says, no more questions, drop, let's drop it for now. So uh, Rasputin is trying to convince uh, Takijap, another Lieutenant, um, in the monk's employ. He's a disgraced Japanese Imperial captain who is now basically just a pirate. He tries to convince Takijap to, to join him. He's gonna stab the monk in the back and take all, all, the, all the gold and head out. Takijap basically just says, dude, just take whatever money you have, go to South America. You won't win going against the monk. Stupid idea. Of course, he can't convince Rasputin because Rasputin's a moron. And Tacky Jap takes off. And uh, he runs into Corto. Corto tells him, he's like, hey, listen to me. You're not taking Kane with you. You're going to leave Kane on the island. Tacky Jap really doesn't care because everything's falling apart. All of a sudden, the Australian Navy shows up way before they expected. So they all scramble to, to get out of there. Cordo Maltese runs to Kane's bedroom and he says, he says, you're going you're gonna to stay here. You're not going to get on any ship, even though the monk wants you to. The Australian Navy would take good care of you once they land. So Corder talks to the monk for a second and walks away. And then all of a sudden he hears this gunshot. Runs back and he sees Lieutenant Sluter injured on the ground. Turns out it was the monk. The monk wanted a submarine. So uh, Corto lifts him up and takes him to this cave. And I guess he knows some first aid because he uh, saves his life. So this uh, 
guy shows up and he says, he informs uh, Corto that Sprindolin has been proclaimed the king of Escondida. The monk and Takijap have already left. But before they can escape, the Australians show up. And Taro is right in the lead in his little uniform. And he pulls, he has a gun on Cordo and he says, you are, from this moment on, you are our prisoner. And then they find Rasputin ludicrously, ludicrously dressed like this. He thought that he was going to be declared the, the king of Escondida, but uh, no go. And now he's under custody, just like Corto, by the Australians. So Kane is reunited with Taro. They definitely, uh, you know, have got this deep bond of friendship. So um, the Groove Snore kids basically talked to their uncle, the the captain, and they told him all of the good things that Corto did. So he gets a pardon. But Captain Sluter isn't so lucky. All of a sudden they have this huge explosion. That's a pretty crazy sh shading there. Just the white light of the explosion and all these like splotchy blobs of ink. It turns out that the Victoria, that's the ship they came in on, the munitions exploded. And it turns out that it was Sluter. Sluter somehow got an, you know, an Australian or English uniform and got onto the ship and blew it up. So they capture him. The Groove Snore kids are also like Sluter, so they try to uh, appeal to the authorities, you know, their uncle, and to save him. But they condemn him to death. Pandora tries one more time to talk to her uncle all alone. It doesn't work. She goes to visit him in his prison cell. And then they come to get him. It's time for him to be executed. And as he's leaving, he just grabs her, or approaches her and kisses her. And she's all crying. And they march him off. Right as he says fire, you don't hear like kaboom or butta, butta, butta. But it's just this like quiet, silent movement. This is really interesting. Look how Cordo is drawn there. Like what, more detail than we've seen yet. He looks very haggard and old. And I just, I was wondering to myself, <clears throat> you know how artists can control the flow of time by, you know, if you've got a comic that's very detailed, it slows the reader down. So I wonder if you wanted to make this moment like resonate because like right as Sluter dies, we just see these like static, like your eye would linger a little longer. But that's just weird the way he's drawn there. Kind of looks like Wolverine or something. So Kane and T Taro, they go into um, Sluter's cabin looking for some stuff they could maybe send to his family. Because Sluter, you know, was a good guy, basically, even though he was uh, on the enemy side. And they find a letter addressed to Corto Maltese. And he opens it up and reads it. And basically, Sluter's telling him the whole story. He knows the whole story about who the monk is. And it turns out the monk is Thomas Groofsnor. And he was in love with Magritha. But for some reason, Magritha married his brother, Tadio. Um, I don't know why. But uh, he kind of went crazy. And that's why that fire broke out on the day of their wedding. He started it. And then he disappeared. 
because she went, went kind of nuts. So he goes into Ronaldo Groove Snore's office. And he's already he's pretty pissed at him for killing uh, Sluter. And he decides to blackmail him. And they get in this fight. They duke it out. But Corto wins because he fights dirty. Punches him right in the nuts here. And he basically says, you know, I'll reveal the contents of this message. Everyone will know about your family unless you f uh, free Rasputin. Because I think they were going to execute Rasputin too. He certainly deserves it. But the weird thing is, is he didn't really do it because he cares about Rasputin, even though a little part of him does. But he mainly wanted to put a black mark on Ronaldo's reputation because he's basically freeing a vicious pirate. And... That's going to be, you know, not, not look good on his record. So uh, it's kind of interesting, this scene, where Rasputin kind of admits to uh, to Corto that he's his only friend. <laughs> he even says, you know that deep down I love you. <laughs> I appreciate everything you've done for done for me. And Corto totally speaks truth here. He says, I'd rather be friends with a tarantula. So he says goodbye to Sprindolin, who's now the king of the island. And he stops for a moment at this little shipwreck looks very old. It's been there for a while. We see from the Bridge of the Destroyer, we see the um, the Groove Snore kids, and they're looking through their binoculars, and they see, you know, they're looking at Corto on the beach, looking at the ship. And uh, we find out that this was the ship that, you know, many years ago, Corto crash-landed on the Monk's Island. And uh, having a very contemplative mo moment because that definitely changed his life for the past few years. You know, he's been working for the monk and doing all these nefarious things. So he probably has a lot of regret, you know, thinking about it. So uh, Corto takes off in this little craft and Kane and Taro row out to say goodbye. Pandora said she didn't want a long goodbye. She... I don't know, a little too emotionally raw or something. But when he hears that, he sails the ship next to the destroyer. He wants to say goodbye to Pandora. And he kind of admits his affection for her. He says, how beautiful you are. And they have this moment, silently looking into each other's eyes. And she just says, I'm not coming with you, Gordon Maltese. And he says, I know. And uh, they have a sweet goodbye, a sweet farewell. But then Tara says, hey, can I ask you something, Corto? Can I come aboard your ship and join you on your further adventures? And he says, sure, climb aboard. You're the best navigator I've ever met. And so Tara says goodbye to Kane. Hopefully they'll see each other again. They're very good friends at this point. And Corto sails off with Taro to for further adventures in the South Seas that will spend decades. Ah, so that's it. The very first Corto Maltese graphic novel from 1967. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've been reading about this for years. Uh, just last year, I, f I read my first Corto Maltese graphic novel. I don't even know what it was. It was just a random one in the series from another... I think it was one of the IDW books. But, uh, yeah... 55 years without reading Hugo Pratt, even though I've uh, read so much about him over the years in Comics Journal and all these magazines and books about comics. But uh, he's really good storyteller, really fun stuff. And I can totally see why Corto Maltese is such a sensation. You know, he's he really is a great character. But I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pedics Academy 
of Comic Book Studies.